Have you ever wondered what is viscosity? What is really the viscosity of a fluid when it goes through a tube or spread on a surface? Viscosity is one of the most important parameters when you deal with lubricants. So what is it really? In your everyday life, you encounter a bunch of different products which will have behave differently. Let's take honey for example. You know that it will flow slowly along the side of the pot when you will take it. If it is a bit warmer outside, in summer for example, it will flow more easily. But could you measure this difference? Let's take water now. Which you could say it's a really fluid product. If you had to compare it with olive oil, you would probably say olive oil is a lot thicker than water. It will mean if you had a scale for viscosity, water will have a lower viscosity than olive oil. But how could you measure how far these two viscosities are from each other? Could you even give a value to them? To answer this question, we need to look a bit closer to what fluids are really made of. A simplistic way to describe it is each drop of fluid contains small atoms. These small entities can be attached to each other or not, in small groups or big groups. These links between atoms will have a big effect on the viscosity of the fluid. Let's take an example. If you fill up a gap between two metal surfaces with a fluid, oil with water with honey, if you apply a force on these surfaces that compress the fluid, and if the atoms of the fluid have no link between each other, the atoms at the extremities of the contact will be ejected, meaning that the fluid will not be able to stay between these two plates. The force is too strong. Of course, it will depend on the force that you apply on these two plates. If now you fill the gap with a more viscous fluid, that is to say a fluid in which atoms have a lot of bond between each other, the fluid film will be a lot stronger. You will need a lot more force to expose the fluid between the two metal plates. So these bonds between atoms determine if the viscosity of the fluid will be high or not. But how can we measure the viscosity? We can't really measure the length of the bonds, it will be too complicated and too long to do. During the 19th century, a guy named George Gabriel Stokes did a lot of work on fluid dynamics. And with other scientists, they set up a simple way to measure the viscosity. The fluid is inserted in a tube, it flows down only with the effects of gravity. When it reaches the first mark at the top of the tube, the stopwatch is started. Then the time for the fluid to reach the second mark at the bottom of the tube is measured. Of course, higher the viscosity of the fluid, longer is the time needed for the fluid to reach the second mark at the bottom. And because for fluids with a really high viscosity like honey, it is better to use a larger tube, so the time between the two marks is not too long, each tube has a coefficient. And the trick is, if we multiply this coefficient by the time measured, it gives the viscosity in Santi Stokes. The unit comes of course from George Gabriel Stokes. And like meter and centimeter, one stoke equals 100 centi stokes. Because the measurement is also a measurement of the surface of the cross section of the tube in which the fluid will flow within a certain time, one centi stoke is also equal to a millimeter square per second. Here are the viscosities of the three different fluids we have been talking about. Water is the reference. It has a viscosity of 1 centistokes. The viscosity of olive oil is around 100 centistokes and for honey, 200 to 1000 centistokes. Of course, it depends on the type of olive oil and honey. These values are just averages. Let's have a look at lubricants now. When an oil is lubricating a machine, why the viscosity is so important? Like we have already seen, the fluid will be trapped between the two surfaces it needs to lubricate. The surfaces it needs to protect against wear. In the example of a gear, the zone with the higher load, where the force applied on the fluid is the highest, is where the teeth are in contact. If the viscosity is not high enough, the fluid will not be able to avoid the contact between the metal surfaces because it will be squashed and expulsed from the contact area. This will lead to a lot of wear and creation of metal particles. 
But of course, if the viscosity is too high, it will slow down the movement of the gears and the system will consume too much energy. The choice of viscosity is therefore a compromise. It has to be chosen carefully. <laughs>